there's something very hot about a chicken charge with heels on. I would run, I think it was 35,000 square feet on Michigan Ave in Chicago and three floors, 250 employees, 17 managers. And I would always be the click, 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 clack girl. I just clacked and clacked around with my heels on. I like that sound and frankly, maybe it's a good warning <laughs> to, to keep people working because I know you're coming, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, I'm tough as nails and I will bust your balls in a heartbeat. While I was with my ex, I got very large, very heavy. My shoes always fit. And no matter how I felt about my body, I always loved my shoes. My calves would be rocking with these crazy shoes. It just makes me feel better about me. I always felt better in a really cool pair of shoes. And I kind of take it back to the beginning of why I even started this was, was about walking down Fifth Avenue with more pep in your step. So go buy yourself a new pair of shoes on Valentine's Day instead of worrying about all the boyfriend and the flowers that need to show up and just be your own Valentine. Go buy yourself a new pair of shoes and love who you are. That's the one thing. Like whenever I go outside, I love looking at someone's choice of footwear. It does tell you quite a bit about who they are. A Day in My Shoes is a project about women helping women. I go from city to city across the country and now internationally with Grand Cayman, where I go and I photograph 25 to 45 women per city to give back to a domestic violence shelter in each city that I work with. The women are photographed anonymously in their favorite shoes, and a story is written from the person's perspective that I've photographed about maybe something troubling in their life where the end has got a nice silver lining on it. Every call's different. I mean, a lot of times we get uh, domestic violence calls that have merit, some that have no merit, but it's uh, pretty prevalent in our society. Both men and women are victims. I don't think that's surprising. Uh, nowadays, I think people are a little bit more open where years back, I think people didn't really call for service and service calls weren't taken as serious as they are now. But now people are breaking out of the cycle of silence and looking more for help and trying to get out of bad situations. Lots of times we see generations and generations of people, unless people have support and a means of uh, supporting themselves to be able to get out of the situation, then I think that that's what's causing more people to come forward now and try to get out of bad situations. There is an automatic bond. It will either strike a chord with someone who's like, oh, what's a day in my shoes? There's a gravitating moment with different people where they just feel like they could share. Try to multiply that by 42 women, 30 minutes a piece, and they just met me. It happens almost every time. It's not worth it, life's too short. What's your name? Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie. Thank you. It spoke to me. That kind of thing really hits home because even if you didn't go through it, you know people who have. Well, I grew up in a small town. My parents were honestly very strong. They were very in love, very together. So it's very weird. I got into a relationship when I was about 15 with this boy. It was very, um, it was very stressful for me throughout high school. I'll never forget the one time where I was confronting him. I was right next to the wall and he actually punched. It was like he was going to hit me, but he decided not to. And he hit the wall instead and he broke his hand. But for some reason I wouldn't leave him. It was very hard. It was very hard to get him out of my life because you still care about that person. But it finally came out here because even after all the crap, I just realized that I just wasn't happy where I was. I needed to make the change myself. I feel so much younger now that I'm older. You don't have to be 40, 50, 30 years old to go through things. Empathy is a very strong thing when you can put yourself in people's shoes like that. That's why I love her thing, like a day in my shoes, because nobody truly knows what it's like. When you feel these strong emotions for people, even though you don't know what their day is like, I feel that it's amazing. Amy and I met through our husbands, they work together, and I think we have uh, had an immediate kinship for each other, love of art and beauty and fashion. And uh, when I found out the project that she does, it just really hit home for me. I love that she has found a way to take something scary and bad from her past and turn it into something so beautiful and so strong that allows other women that have experienced abuse to tell their stories, share their stories without the fear of people finding out who they are 
uh, but still allowing them to share their stories and do it in such a, a beautiful and healthy way. I have a wonderful husband who's very supportive and I'm very lucky that uh, that I haven't experienced the, the depth of abuse that a lot of women face. The big nonprofit that my sorority support, supported and still supports is helping women from abusive relationships. And so I feel like ever since a young age, ever since I was in college, it's held a very strong place in my heart. And uh, I really love that I can support Amy with, with her project. We miss each other a lot. If it's been a hard day of shooting, which includes horrible stories sometimes about kids, I can't get back to the hotel quick enough to talk to them because my heart hurts. You know, hearing the stories and not being able to touch them immediately and hug them and just go, you guys are okay, everything's good. And again, more selfishness on my part because I just need those hugs back from them because the stories have been too sad to hear. The first few years, I did a little video on one of them. They both said that we know that mommy needs to do this because she goes and she helps women. When I hear that, I think it is absolutely imperative. If I died in a plane crash, they would know that mommy was doing something good for other people. And that screams volumes to me on how I want them to be raised and how when they get older that they look at women and that they speak kindly and they never take them for granted. I'm just trying to teach them this is so, it's so easy. Just be kind and loving and honest. And remember that mommy's always out there doing something good to make sure to help other women. Stay focused on that as well. I've raised right under $300,000 so far, just under my umbrella in the last five years. And it's just me. And I know you can't see my disgusting room right now, but it is a mess. <laughs> I have, you know, two kids and I have an office in my bedroom. So it's, um, it's pretty impressive for a person who woke up in the middle of the night and wrote it on a post-it note that has said, I in my shoes, I need to do this.